In Townsville, Queensland, long-distance trucker Peter Titoff is getting set for a cross-country haul. To his friends and foes, the 48-year-old is better known as Turbo. He's a hard-driving, hard-talking... Jesus Christ, that's hot! ...outback trucker. I've come from Brisbane to Townsville, done me drops, and from here we'll go straight through to Darwin. Turbo makes his living hauling mixed freight. Whatever he can, wherever he can. A mixture load is something that I sort of specialise with, is a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of everything, not just a straightforward run-of-the-mill everyday load, because anybody can do that. Well, I'm not just anybody. I'm me. I'm Turbo. On this job, he's moving three trailers of tyres, foam bricks and a truck cab and horse trailer. Turbo will head west from Townsville through 2,500 kilometres of bush, farmland and desert to the city of Darwin in the Northern Territory. That's like travelling the length of the river Ganges, pulling 30 tonnes of freight. As a one-man, one-truck business, Turbo's competing with Australia's biggest trucking firms. But after 20 years on the road, he's decided to go head-to-head -to -head with the big boys. New girl, and I've just taken over a new company. So now it's uh, world domination for, for P&J Transport. I'm now at the stage where I'm actually going to grow the business to become one of the largest trucking companies in, in Australia. So gradually over, you know, a five to ten year plan, get, get myself into, you know, 100, 200 trucks. I'm taking on so much because I don't want to be a little fish in a big fish pond anymore. I want, I want to become one of these sharks that are in the fish pond. But that kind of fighting talk doesn't come cheap. Turbo's risked it all, buying two new trucks and three loading yards. You're looking at half, half a million dollars in buying out this business and setting it up, and that's that's just in, in gear. Then I've got to turn around and I've got to start, you know, I've got to put fuel into it, I've got wear and tear, registration, insurance, I've got to make sure that all, all the freight's on there and the freight keeps getting loaded all the time. Every time those wheels don't turn, you don't make money. With everything on the line, Turbo's beginning the biggest gamble of his life. I could end up losing the lot. That's the biggest risk. I could lose everything I've worked for. And that's a chance that I'm willing to take. In the remote central town of Alice Springs, trucking veteran Steve Graham is lining up for another run, this time through the dirt red heart of Australia. Find a piece of the road that I like and we'll wander along. The outback legend's been riding the country's roughest roads for 40 years. His specialty, getting trucks where trucks don't go. And today, it's another vital run with vital freight. This road train's just come from Perth. It'll go back and take those machines back to Kalgoorlie. They're needed on time. My major concern right now is getting back to link in with other jobs. After this run, Steve has months' worth of jobs lined up back to back. If he misses this deadline, he risks losing the lot. Business worth thousands of dollars. With the clock ticking, Steve's keen to get loaded and hit the road. Straighten yourself up, Pope. Straighten yourself up. Despite the pressure, Steve's feeling lucky. We're going to have a dream run. This will, this will be new for Outback Truckers. We're a dream run. But then again, it is the Outback. We're fair smack in the middle of Australia, so you never know what can happen. <laughs> From Alice Springs, Steve's dream run will take him to the town of Kalgoorlie in Western Australia's gold mining country. 
he's been hired to haul 40 tonnes of building equipment through the guts of the outback, crossing two states and 1,600 kilometres. In Europe, that kind of distance would get you clean through half a dozen countries. Over the next three days, Steve will be lucky to see that many cars. Time and Steve's other jobs won't wait, but as he's about to leave, there's bad news from the freight owners. If that's the way it's got to be, then Noodle, that's the way it's got to be. That's the way it is, mate, unfortunately. So we're waiting for some parts to come in. One of the machines we're taking back to the west needs some repairs, so that's what's holding me up till tomorrow now. Waiting for the parts puts Steve's tight schedule under even greater pressure. And there's more bad news from the freight owner. Steve's to lose a third of his load. There's been a sudden decision made by the customer that these containers that I bought in here might be required in Darwin, but it's very frustrating because it cost me a third of the freight. Steve's lost time and now money. Dream run, dream run. I'm not feeling like I'm living the dream right now. It's going back to normal trucking nightmares. With his dream quickly turning into a nightmare, Steve still has to cross half of the world's largest island. In the snowy mountains of New South Wales, it's the start of another day on the farm. But this farm's a monster. At the isolated peak of Boko Rock, work's underway to build a vast $360 million wind farm. Driving the project are heavy haulage experts, Rex J. Andrews Transport. It's their job to deliver 67 huge wind turbines to a mountaintop construction site, piece by massive piece. For operations manager Mark Shiberus, it's a monumental challenge. Probably 12 months lead up work before you even transport your first component. We get a, a start date and then we just got to make it all happen. We go down and we talk to forestry, use their roads, scope it, do surveys on bridges, surveys on the road. It's a mammoth job where the numbers are colossal. Mark's team will make 536 trips, covering 70,000 kilometres, hauling more than 10,000 tonnes of components. The components are all made overseas, so they come in by ship down to wharf, we unload them. We bring them up here, we reload them, and then we can truck each component to the wind farm. Starting at the port of Eden, it's a 160 kilometre run to Boko Rock, making a 2,000 metre climb into the heart of the snowy mountains. Six times a day, six days a week, for six months. First out of the gate today is a 55 metre turbine blade. 41-year-old lead trucker, Glenn Waters, is at the wheel. Right, yeah, we're on the move. Okay, right, mate. Joining Glenn are two pilots and a police escort. It's their job to guide the huge truck through the tight country roads ahead and stop oncoming traffic. And with a load this big, even leaving the yard is a headache. Sometimes I think you need to be a contortionist to be able to see as far back on these mirrors. Each blade is made of delicate fibreglass and worth $200,000. Break one and the nearest spare is 15,000 kilometres away. Shipping in replacements would take months, costing millions of dollars in delays. Glenn's safety margin? Centimetres. And it's just the first corner of the day. Hundreds more to come. In Queensland, Turbo's heading to pick up a third trailer of freight. Hopefully I can line it up perfect and one snap, bang, done. With his new business at stake and 2,000 kilometres to go, he needs to hitch up quickly and get moving. Turbo needs luck on his side. OK, cross fingers, arms, legs, toes, bum hair and nose hair. I've earned it. His road train's connected, but there's a problem. The lights on his rear trailer aren't working. Heap of shit lights. 
Without them, Turbo's going nowhere. Frustrates the shit out of you. With night falling, repairs will have to wait until tomorrow. Next morning, time for repairs, turbo style. Zip ties and duct tape. Just got to chase the problem, see what it's going on. It's not this plug, I've just pulled this one apart. It's shit I don't need to happen right now. Why can't everything just be automatic? A faulty plug seems to be the cause. We gotta get a plug. Only problem, Turbo's out of spares. To find one, he'll have to hitch a ride to the nearest store, 60 kilometres away in the sleepy town of Julia Creek, where it's Sunday morning. It's a simple $20 part, but if Turbo can't find one, he'll miss the deadline on a priceless job for his new firm. I'm chasing a seven pin round plug for the trailers. There's word of a local mechanic who might be able to help. All right. Only problem is... Right up boys, this show's on the road. In Alice Springs, Steve Graham's finally got some good news. The missing parts for one of the machines have arrived. See you, boys. Well behind schedule, and with thousands of dollars of work on the line, Steve's 70-tonne, 53-metre road train can finally roll out of Alice and hit the tough roads of Central Australia. I've got a couple of thousand k's in front of me. About 1,200 of it's dirt, and Mother Nature and dirt roads have got their little wicked ways of playing all sorts of horrible tricks on you. So we'll see how we go. Steve can only hope the weather gods will be kind. I'm still comfortable with my time to get to Kalgoorlie, but I can't afford any, any hassles out there. There's been some talk about storms and stuff out there. On these roads, heavy rain can turn dust into mud in a matter of minutes, and mud means the risk of getting bogged. While the distances are huge and the risks great, the rewards can be spectacular. And there it is, that's the big bundi, the big kahuna. The rock to Australians should be like Mecca is to the Muslims. I think every Australian should make a pilgrimage to the rock. It's something well worth seeing and it's, it's part of our heritage, it's part of Australia. You know, I've seen the rock hundreds of times, but every time I see that Uluru again, it brings a smile to my face. Even for a veteran like Steve, the spectacle of Uluru can be too much of a distraction. Bugger, this is what happens. I get carried away by the rock and I'm about to overshoot my turn off. I've missed it. And there's one thing we do out here with a road train. If you miss a, if you miss a corner with a road train anywhere else, you've got to go around the block. And if you miss your corner with a road train here, you've got to go around the rock. see how the local people have, have their attachment to it and have their spiritual legends in, involving this place. It's, um, it's a pretty awesome place. It's a stunning detour, but it's valuable time lost. With an awesome sight behind him, there's a dreaded one ahead. There's 1,200 kilometres of dirt in front of me. And uh, it's the old story, prepare. Be ready. If you're not prepared, well, your dramas just get bigger. Steve knows all too well what he's about to face. This uh, Docker River Road was absolute nightmare. The corrugations were bloody horrogations. From now on, supplies for Steve and Teeny the dog will be precious. And drink? No, we can't waste it. For the next 1,200 kilometres, there's little water, food, or fuel. Breakdown out here and you risk your life. In New South Wales, heavy haulage expert Glenn Waters is dealing with his first nail-biting challenge, getting a massive turbine blade out of a loading yard and onto the highway. 50 metres down, 160 kilometres to go. Thanks, guys. At six tonnes, 
each blade is half the weight of a city bus and four times as long. Hauling one is a huge test, even for the best. Yeah, it's an eye-opener getting used to these longer loads. You're always thinking about different things as you go along. Take a bit more of the road and be on the wrong side on some of these corners more than what you'd like to be. Sometimes with this job you feel like a circus clown, the amount of head movement that you do watching one mirror to the other to make sure everything's tracking nicely around the corners. Boss Mark is in the rear pilot car. After a year planning this job, he knows the hazards all too well. Our biggest concern on this main road is meeting a heavy vehicle on a, on a bad corner where we need to be on the wrong side of the road to take that corner. While oncoming traffic is a constant hazard, Mark and Glenn face another big problem, getting a load that won't bend down a road that does. Overall length of this load's 55 metres in total. It's on par with your road trains, but you don't have as many articulation points. In this mountainous region, a series of tight corners lies ahead. Without pivot points, the blade's too big to steer through them. The only way Glenn can make it is to separately steer both his truck and the rear trailer. It's got a little petrol motor on the back with a hydraulic pump on it and two rams so that the trailer can steer left or right. I've got a little switch down here to steer myself and I get my rear pilot to start the motor up for me. Makes life a little bit quicker. Going to go auto start there for me, Fergie? Yeah, auto start, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, we're on the move. Down through this section, basically go from one side of the road to the other. The truck will be on the fog line on the wrong side of the road and the trailer will be tagging down on the other side. As he approaches hairpin bends, Glenn must keep both his prime mover and the trailer on precisely the right line. Got the truck on the left, he's over on the right, so He's got to make sure, even though he's got the three cars in front of him, he'd be still watching that front of that load that there's no one trying to sneak past him. These corners are tight. You're going from, it's like a big, long, sweeping dog leg. So you're just steering and at both ends. Taking up the entire road, he's relying on the front pilot car to stop any traffic. Without the steering there, we just physically wouldn't fit around the corner. Make a mistake now, and the entire multi-million dollar operation could grind to a halt. On a sleepy Sunday morning, Turbo's $300,000 road train is stranded in need of a $20 part behind a mechanic's locked door. But around the back of the workshop, there's hope. On his day off, the mechanics come in. Here you go, mate, just chasing a plug for a Susie coil. Yeah, I'll let Yeah? Just go and get This is one thing that I love about the little country towns. You know, people will always be there to help. They're the ones... And he's got the answer to Turbo's prayers. And that's how we rewire. <laughs> we here with A-Rod! I nearly fell ass up then. <laughs> With the truck repaired, Turbo can get moving. To make up lost time, he has a big day ahead. Go um, Julian Creek to cross to the Curry, from there into Iser and cross over into Northern Territory. Roughly about the eight to 900 kilometres for the day. Such massive distances mean massive amounts of fuel. At this pit stop, Turbo will pump 1,500 litres of diesel into his tanks at a cost of nearly $2,500. While diesel hurts Turbo's wallet, it's the damage it does to his body which has more serious consequences. If I service one of the trucks and I get diesel on me, it affects me. I, I end up really crook. After 20 years driving trucks, constant exposure to the toxic effects of diesel has taken its toll. Diesel, which has seeped through the pores in my skin, which has then gone into my blood system. So I literally have diesel coursing through my veins. Eventually, it, it 
will screw me up to where I won't be able to drive. It was Turbo's illness that inspired him to build his new business for his and his family's future. Plan is for the company, for everybody all over the world to know us. I'm setting it so my daughter has something, so once she's of age, it's going to be there for her and it's going to be the biggest thing that she will have left of me. On the edge of the Great Victoria Desert, an old enemy threatens to delay Steve further. I'm starting to regret those smart statements I made back in Alice Springs about um, uh, dream run, blue skies and the sun shining all day. Any time I say I'm going somewhere and it's going to be fine weather, it bloody rains. With his schedule already on a knife edge, bad weather could destroy Steve's chances of making the deadline on this job, risking thousands of dollars of other work. The normal fear with the weather is that uh, we get enough rain that they close the road, and, and the closed roads cost me time. But another of his old foes has just as big an appetite for destruction. Corrugations. These constant ridges turn dirt roads into bone-shaking highways from hell. Every last nut and bolt on the truck takes a beating. Steve must pull up and check his load regularly. Every stop means more time lost. But push on, and he risks damaging his load, his reputation and the job. I've just got onto the bad corrugations and uh... It doesn't take long, only a couple of kilometres. And anything that's going to come loose will rattle loose. And it's not just the freight that's taking a battering. What I've got here is a great big stone cut. A tyre's been ripped clean open. Changing it here will eat up precious time and Steve spares. Temporary repair. You know, I'll get the rest out of this tyre rather than put another good tyre on here and take a chance. First, Steve threads strips of soft rubber into the puncture. When the tyre's pumped back up, the air pressure should flatten the rubber, plugging the hole. But with air still pouring from the tyre, it seems one plug's not enough. While the tyre's not airtight, Steve's willing to take a gamble. See what I get out of it. As he's getting ready to go, Steve spots another victim of the corrugations. That is a serve yourself right, you know. I meant to take these plugs yesterday, I didn't, and one's dragged and buggered itself. Steve's kicking himself. He should have taped up the trailer plugs before heading onto the dirt. I know how bad the road can be. I know what the corrugations are like, and I know that you tape your plugs, and I looked at it yesterday and thought, I better put some tape on that, and thought, no, oh, she'll be right. He now has no rear lights. Out here, no lights can be deadly. If he's to carry on, he must fix it. Everything got a good shake up back there. Just so much for the dream run. Stranded, Steve's bleeding air, time and money. <laughs> Tackling hairpin bends on a mountainous country road with a monster 55 metre load, Glenn Waters is working overtime. Trying to watch everything at the same time. Got the road closed with the pilots and the police. After conquering the first part of the hazardous journey, there's one final turn onto the main highway. With a load that won't bend, it's a constant battle. One small error of judgment could spell disaster. You've got to be fairly crucial on your line to keep it all flowing and moving smoothly, otherwise anything can um, go wrong. While Glenn's in control of his truck, there's one thing he can't control, other drivers. I've had a couple of uh, close calls on some of the blind corners. You don't like coming around the corner halfway on the wrong side of the road trying to get the load around and a car comes scooting around the corner. It uh, makes for a very interesting time. It's down to Glenn's pilots to clear a path for him. But in forest country, he's not the only big rig on the road. This log truck has pulled up on the side of the road because he knows that we need all the road through here. And to be honest with you, these log and truck blokes have been really, really good on this job because, you know, we hold them up a bit and, and we're coming into their territory 
it's really, really been good that these blokes have come on board and um, been really helpful because it's made our job easier. But not everyone is on board. Up ahead, a log truck has ignored the pilot's warnings to stop. It's heading straight for Glen. Move, move. Let's stop him. Yeah, you got a little one coming up behind you there, Mark. Happened there? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Mark, I need you to get them to stop on some of these big sweeping corners because I'm well and truly on their side of the road, please. Just make sure he pulls them up, mate, because that was pretty close. Yeah. It's basically the last leg in the Darwin now. Turbo's crossed into the Northern Territory on his run to Darwin. If he's to make up lost time, he needs clear skies. The only thing that's slightly playing on my mind is the wind factor. And a clear radio. There was a case. Yeah, was Just put it in the GPS, 2,800 something kilometres. There was a yeah, case. I just had a quick add up, and I reckon it was 2660 or something, so, yeah. Who gives a shit about your shit? Good news sit in our car. Some people, they'll sit here and they'll just talk shit. Absolute just waffle on, you know? Oh, we had bacon and eggs for breakfast this morning, and oh yeah, well dinner that we had. Bacon alone. Better, right? Oh, yeah, we can see you up in front. We're sitting on 110. Who gives a? Yeah, we're a little bit above that, I think, but uh, it's all good. That's why you don't talk shit on the radios. Because there's an oversized load coming, they're talking shit, and I couldn't hear them call until she's called it someone else. You know, I need to know that shit's coming at me. Yeah, no, the edge of the road just caught me the last second. Oh, you're right, mate. Have a good one, eh? With the dramas behind him, Turbo can cool down to his normal, relaxed self. Brain dead car driver, he's got no brains in his ass. Pull over, let me go past you. No, no, I, 130 kilometre an hour speed zone, and he's doing 70. Plenty of opportunity to pull off and oblivious to me being behind him. Hasn't once looked in the mirror. And I can't overtake him because we're in bends, climbing a hill. Just because they're on holidays, they think that I've got all the time in the world for them. To drive up here, they need to learn to drive in these conditions. We're all out here doing a job and we need to know what's going on. What's going on there? It's an engine warning alarm. It could be a sign of serious trouble. Just coming the engine shut down. Why? Oh, I'm gonna pull up, I'm gonna um, throw the bonnet. Turbo's had this truck less than a month. To buy it, he's gone deep into the red. If the engine problem is serious, both it and the gamble of a lifetime could be about to blow up in his face. This corrugation shook everything up though, it's that bloody bad. Steve's 70 ton road train has been brought to a halt by a broken $20 electrical plug. He hopes a spare will do the trick. Fortunately, I've got a plug. If he can't fix it, he'll have to unhook and turn back for Alice Springs, 400 kilometres away. A delay that could cost him this job and several others. Let's see how good we are. And on. Voila. We have lights. While he has lights, he doesn't have time. It's nearly dark, I've only got an hour or two to go. Steve needs to push on as hard as he can on these rough roads before nightfall. It's amazing what corrugations will do. You don't have to be on the corrugations for long for the little bits of drama to start to set in. Drama is not what Steve needs as he hits one of the most infamous roads in Australia. 
Well, here we are in the west. We're uh, just across the border. We're on the Great Central Road now. We've come off the Chupururu Road onto the Great Central Road. The Great Central Road links the west with the heart of Australia. It's 1,100 kilometres of red dirt track straight through the depths of the outback. Few truckers dare to make the crossing. Those that do risk life and limb. Some of these cars out here go back as far model-wise as the late 40s. Some of them just perished out here for the want of a bit of petrol or a tyre. Suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, the latest victim of the Great Central Road. I'll uh, pull up here and see what's happening. Just metres away, the same model van is an eerie sight. But this broken down tourist is lucky. A rare passing vehicle was able to help. My wife has gone to town to uh, see if she could get a tow truck driver to come in and pick me up. With help on its way, Steve can move on. No worries. Thank you very we'll, much. We'll leave yeah, you to it. Good on you. The $800 towing bill will be worth every cent. It's been a long, tough day. Finally, Steve can pull up for the night. But for Outback truckers, there's no rest until the job's done. Steve wants to head out at first light, and that means changing his leaking tyre now. If you couldn't deal with stuff like this in this business, well, you'd have to get out of it. Stay home with Mum. He's tired and hungry but the veteran trucker still has some heavy lifting to do. Each wheel weighs 50 kilograms. On a bad day, they can take an hour to change. Yep, we're on our way through. After dodging a 100-ton log truck, Glenn Waters is heading towards his next big challenge. Just coming up for a Sienna section to start heading into Bombala itself. We'll be coming around on the wrong side of the road because it's the only possible way to get this load around there. Glenn must get the massive truck through the small rural town of Bombala. Yeah, you got sign duty down at the roundabout too, um, Mark. Here, he faces a completely different set of hazards. Play dodge the traffic islands, cars reverse parking and um, pilot will shut down the roundabout. It's quite a sight for a sleepy rural town. Yeah, just start crossing over to the wrong side of the road. The biggest obstacle is a sharp left at a roundabout. In this monster, it's like threading an elephant through the eye of a needle. Hit anything here, and Glenn risks getting stuck, blocking the main street. While the cab's hard up against the wall of a hotel, 50 metres back, Glenn is locking the rear trailer over as far as it will go. Once again, there's only centimetres between success and failure. OK, let's get going. Glenn's fought his way out of yet another tight corner. He's now on the home stretch. And as you can see, the road conditions change here from the highway. We go to the old backtrack pothole road. Finally, after 160 kilometres of total concentration, it's a relief to reach his destination. Glenn's got just one final task left to perform. He needs to turn his truck around so the blade is facing in the right direction to be craned off. Come back. Keep coming, mate. It's a difficult manoeuvre and one he's never done before. Hold it. Take it easy, mate. 
Making it even harder, a contractor has left a huge cable drum right in Glen's path. Get that cable drum there. Hold it there, work. How's the cable drum at the back? Got to go back, Fergus. Yeah, well, I can't get him back in there now. Yeah, that's the jack side, that's right there, mate. Push it around. We've got a cable drum here that I can't. It's, it's very tight. We're right on the edge there. I can't get any more turn out of the prime mover and. We're not going to get it like this. Glenn has no choice but to steer his trailer into a ditch. They're just trying to juggle it because we've got drainage ditches down here, so... Not only does he risk getting the truck bogged, but it's putting the trailer under extreme stress. Well, if there's any more pads like this, you're going to have to make road wider. You're going to break one of these trailers. It's pulling the turntable off yeah. when it twists like that. And what it's doing is just rocking it up too much. And doing this isn't good for it. To make matters worse, the next blade is running just minutes behind Glenn. If he can't get clear quickly, the whole job will grind to a standstill. A warning alarm has forced Turbo to check for damage on his newly acquired truck. I've just popped the cap. It's got plenty of water. Now all I'm doing is I'm having a look to see if I can see anything. Turbo's hoping it's just a minor fault that set off an engine sensor. If he's to make it to Darwin today, he'll have to risk it and push on. It's coming back to being a sensor. Only thing I can do is keep an eye on it. I'll get to Darwin, I'll get it on a computer in Darwin and it will tell me exactly what it is. If this gamble doesn't pay off, Turbo risks getting stuck in the outback with a massive tow truck bill to pay. And it's not looking good. Come back again, it's got, it's got to be the sensor. Despite the risks, Turbo keeps going. He still has 500 kilometres to go, and daylight is almost gone. Finally, after three hard days on the road, Turbo's made it. Despite his troubles, this trucker's ready for more. Two and a half thousand clicks from Townsville through to Darwin. A couple of little teething problems. You've got to expect it. I didn't know how the truck was going to run because this is the first major trip I've put out with it. Best part is one trailer's unloaded, unload the other trailer in the morning, turn around, fully load both trailers again, straight out of, out of Darwin, straight back to Brisbane. So I'm happy. He's passed the first test on the road to building a trucking empire. It's the end of this journey but just the beginning of a far bigger one. It's dawn in the great Victoria desert. He's had little sleep, but Steve wants to hit the road as early as he can to make up lost time. He can't afford any more delays and needs to make sure his old engine is ready for the last push. I'll just make sure everything's pretty right with this truck. While Steve wants to sprint to the finish line, he still has 300 kilometres of dirt to go. I've got to keep one eye on things because there's little traps, there's little traps just ready to get at a minute's notice. And it's pretty lonely country out here. And the corrugations are back. The bitumen can't come soon enough. And that's her, that's bitumen, that's the good stuff. Nearly 1,200 kilometres of dirt behind us and, um, I don't know, 12 billion corrugations. And lots and lots and lots of cars that never made it. Despite the battering, Steve survived the dirt. And we'll head into some civilization, a shower and a feed, to sit down and feed that someone else cooked somewhere will be nice. After all the delays, he's made it on time. You like getting a job done and you like getting it, getting the freight in on time. Tidy your gear up and 
get some maintenance done and go and do another one. If life could be like that all the time, it would be a pretty good life. Here we are. On this trip, he needed something special on his side. Maybe it's the luck of the rock. Anyway, I'll go with it. He's delivered this load and kept the other jobs alive. But there's no time to spare. He must load up for the next run and do it all over again. Play forwards and backwards until we can get the back around and up. Glenn Waters faces a super-sized dilemma. We're going to steer it from the back. Just hold it there. And go forward steady. Glenn must painstakingly shift his 55-metre load back and forth, inch by inch. Push too hard and he could damage his rear trailer. Aye, aye, go to the right. Or bog his truck in a ditch, bringing the whole job to a halt. That'll do your work. Got about half a metre, keep going. Start pushing the trailer over to the left. Oh, it's going to be a <laughs> At last, the 33 point turn is done. Much to the relief of the whole crew. <laughs> so was that corner. <laughs> Time for the construction team to get to work. Glenn's job is finally done. This is the end of this load. Close it up and we're off for home. At least for today. Tomorrow, these trucking heavyweights will do it all again. And we'll just keep rolling every day like we have been for the last four or five months and just keep a roll on and make sure it all works. Move another turbine. And climb another mountain to help build the future.